Okay, thank you everybody for being here. I'd like to call this Board of Trustees uh, regular meeting to order. Could we please have the roll? Roll call. Trustee Walter Clark. Here. Trustee Sheena Collum. Here. Trustee Deb Deborah Davis Ford. Here. Trustee Howard Levison. Here. Trustee Mark Rosner. Here. Trustee Stephen Schnell. Here. And Village President Alex Torpe. Here. Also in attendance, Barry, Barry Lewis, Village Administrator, Stephen Rother, Village Council, and myself, Chanel Smith, Deputy Clerk. Meeting notice statement. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the press in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6. In addition, notice of this meeting was posted in Village Hall and on the Village's website and has been filed in the Office of the Municipal Clerk. Official action may be taken at this meeting. Thank you. We have one uh, resolution to go into executive session. Uh, Ms. Smith, could you please read the resolution by title? Resolution authorizing an executive session at the 20, excuse me, June 24, 2013 meeting of the Board of Trustees. This is resolution 2013-133. Thank you. Um, and the matter is to be discussed in executive session under attorney-client privilege, movement of cell antennas, and under personnel matters of salary ordinance. Do we have a motion? I move. Moved by Trustee Davis Ford. Second. Seconded by Trustee Column. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. I will reconvene back here at 8 o'clock.
Okay, thank you everybody. I'd like to reconvene this Board of Trustees regular meeting. Could we have a roll call again, please? Sure. Trustee Collum? Here. Trustee Davis Ford? Here. Trustee Levison? Present. Trustee Rosner? Here. Trustee Schnall? Here. Trustee Clark? Here. Village President Torpe? Here. Everybody please rise for the pleasure of the meetings. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, uh, a couple quick announcements. Um, just another reminder about the Downtown After Sundown Concert Series. If you haven't been downtown yet, Friday, Saturday night, 7.30. Um, it's Beauta Park in Sloan Street. There have been some really great bands. Um, the weather's been incredible, so if people haven't been down, certainly encourage folks to head on downtown um, and check those out. Um, and thank you to the South Orange Village Center Alliance for organizing those. Um, also, the South Orange Farmer's Market, um, every Wednesday uh, from 2 to 7 p.m., that is on the uh, that's in the parking lot off of Sloan Street and First Street. Um, some great local uh, vendors and New Jersey farmers. Um, and the beginning, the return of our free concerts in the park. Um, that's five Wednesdays in a row, beginning uh, July 10th at 7:30. Um, those concerts are sponsored by the Village and uh, the Barrett Center and the South Orange Performing Arts Center. Um, you can bring chairs and blankets, and we've got uh, food available from. Um, a bunch of different local vendors um, down at the concerts. They're always really great. Um, again, beginning uh, July 10th for five Wednesdays in a row at 7.30 p.m. Uh, the first item we have on our agenda this evening um, is a private sale of a portion of village-owned property, um, which we are required to put up uh, for auction to see if anybody is interested this evening. Um, this is for block uh, 1005, lot two. Um, to the highest bidder among the three adjacent property owners of lots five, six, and seven. Um, the minimum bid accepted is $32,500. Um, the notice of the auction was provided to the adjacent property owners. Uh, Mr. Rother, is there anything you'd like to add? No, nope. other than to call to see if any of the property owners are willing to place a bid this evening. Okay. Does not appear there are any property owners here willing to place is a bid. There, yeah, is there anyone in the audience willing to place a bid? If not, close the auction. Okay, the auction is so closed. Thank you. Um, we were supposed to have a, uh, a presentation from the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, uh, they weren't able to make it tonight, so we'll reschedule that um, for an upcoming meeting and let folks know when that is. Um, at this time, I would like to open the meeting up for our first of two public comment periods. Um, if there's any member of the public who wishes to speak at this time, um, see if we've got any sign-ups there. Okay, the, uh, the first, uh, Aaron uh, Nuremberg. Um, yep, and just come up to the podium if you could just state your name and your address um, and every uh, comment is limited to four minutes and there's a, a timer back there. My name is Aaron Nirenberg. I live at 289 Western Drive South and uh, I'd rather not speak yet because I don't, I'm not sure I know what the ordinance... Uh, you got to just make sure you speak directly into the microphone. It's a, I'm not sure I you. know what the ordinance that I'm here to find out about is about. So may I wait until sometime later? Yeah, there'll they'll be, um, that's on for second reading this evening, so there will be a public hearing portion um, when we introduce the ordinance. Uh, these, all the signups on the sheet appear to be for this. I don't want to skip anybody if you do want to speak now, um, but is it, does everybody want to wait until the public hearing portion for that ordinance before they speak? And if there's anybody who doesn't, please come forward. Now, I'm just going to skip the list, but you can just please come forward. My name is Jeremy Garber. I live at 299 Western Drive South. 
I'm speaking under the assumption that the ordinance means that uh, one side of Western Drive South and North will be a no parking side. And on, on that assumption, uh, I have the following comments. I, th I don't think the, in my experience, the ordinance is necessary I, and I don't think it's warranted uh, of three reasons. One, uh, in my uh, 18 years of living there, there have been some occasions where people park on both sides of the street, but I've never found it to be impassable, so it's always been passable. Um, two, I assume that the way the ordinance would be enforced would be putting up signs on, on the one side of the street saying no parking here, which will make it, it will change the character of the street and make it a lot uh, uglier. Um, three, there's, a, there's actually some benefit f when people park on the street because it, it slows down traffic. Sometimes people whip around the corner and it actually is like a tra uh, an inadvertent traffic uh, calming device. Uh, so that's basically uh, my take on it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, just come, come up to the podium. And just state your uh, name and address, please. Uh, Punkid Sharma, 294 Western Drive South. I live at the bottom of Western Drive South. I'm the first house on the left side as you go up the hill from West End. Um, I, too, echo Jeremy's uh, comments, but my main point is that I have young children still, and there's, uh, I found the traffic is very fast on that road, and when cars are parked across the street from each other, it just, I've lived there since about 2004, 2005. I bought the house in 2004. I moved in in 2005. I have not found it to be a problem. Um, I've noticed that the traffic's incredibly fast at the bottom of the hill as well. And when there are cars parked on either side, as there are right now in front of my house, traffic is slower. Um, it actually, as it's, it's a natural almost way to slow things down because there can't be a police officer on that road every single minute. As much as I'd like somebody to be there more often, it's just not possible. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to make a comment, just please come up to the podium um, and just state your name and address for the record. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Gary Goldberg. I live at 320 Western Drive, North and South. My house is in the middle, and the post office has us down as North and South. Um, what these gentlemen have said is probably true most of the time. Um, however, it only takes one time when you can't get a fire truck or an ambulance up that street that will cause somebody to, could cause somebody to die. And in my experience, I've had trouble at times getting down the street with my, with my vehicle, which is not an ambulance or, or a fire truck. Um, a van, vans were parked on both sides of the street. There wasn't enough room for me to get my, my car through. Now, um, I know the police chief has already said that it's a dangerous situation for emergency vehicles to get through such a narrow street when cars are parked on both sides. So I've been there, I've been living there since 1992, but things happen and we don't want somebody to die. We don't want somebody to get really hurt or, or, or an ambulance or a fire truck not to be able to get up that street because cars are parked next to one another. And I think, I think that, for me, at least, trumps the convenience factor. Thank you. Can I speak? Yeah, if you'd like to speak, feel free. Just please come up to the podium and just state your name and address. <laughs> My name is Ronald Regala. I'm at 302 Western Drive South. Just make sure you speak directly into the microphone. Okay. I live, my name is Ron Rogala. I live at 302 Western Drive South, South Orange. Um, I've heard these comments and I was, I was hoping we'd get the, uh, uh, the comments on the ordinance in fact, but since these comments are sort of anecdotal, um, I've lived there 35 years. And the day there was an emergency, I must have been out uh, on my birthday or something because I have never seen an emergency there. I have never seen an emergency vehicle not being able to get through except when the streets haven't been uh, salted in the wintertime. Okay. 
So, so for the same reasons, we don't have a watch for the train crossing there. Uh, for the same reasons, we don't have low-flying airplane signs. I think, I think we don't need another emergency sign, and for sure we don't need no parking signs. It's not a through street in one case. It's, it's sort of a horseshoe-shaped street, so any vehicle not being able to get up one side certainly can get up the other side. The chances of, of the emergency being uh, happening at the most remote side, which would be somewhere probably on the upper part of Western Drive North, would be kind of remote. And if I were to casino, I would certainly think that that, that it wouldn't happen. Okay. So, so the emergency situation, I am for, of course, not having people die. I'm not having, I'm, I'm for not having people die because of low flying aircraft, of hawks uh, hitting my eye or something like that also. So, so in the 35 years I've been there, I think um, I have never seen, and never seen anything emergency happen. I've never seen a, the emergency truck in fact, uh, an ambulance certainly can get through, um, unless unless it's uh, someone who's improperly parked away from the curb too far. But I agree that it has a calming effect. Uh, the parking on both sides having a calm, calming effect when it happens. There are and and the parking there is uh, happening on both sides of the street is extremely rare. It's happening right now. There's parking on both sides on one little area. But for the most part, people park on one side. And they don't park for a long time, and they're very close to their cars. Nobody's parking there all day. It's not an all-day parking area. They're at their homes. Or they're cutting the grass. Or, or events like that. They're, they're very close. So they can remove that vehicle very quickly. So, so the chance that these vehicles would be parked there, not being able to move, be moved quickly in an emergency and, and in the first place not having an emergency vehicle being able to get through with the two cars on both sides is, is remote. And uh, I hope this ordinance is, is uh, not amended. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak at this time? Okay, seeing as there are no more members of the public who wish to speak, I'd like to close the public comment period and move on to the approval of minutes. Let me just point out, we're going to discuss this when the ordinance comes up for reading. That's right. <laughs> um, and, and there'll be another chance. For uh, uh, first up, we have the May 29, 2000 budget workshop um, and the May 29, uh, 2013 regular meeting. We have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Trustee Schnall. We have a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Rosner. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Thank you. Uh, the next is the June 10th, 2013 special meeting and the June 10th, 2013 conference agenda. We have a motion? I move. Moved by Trustee Rosner. Second. Seconded by Trustee Levison. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, the next is the June 17th, 2013 special meeting. We have a motion? Motion to approve. Uh, moved by Trustee Schnall. Second. Seconded by Trustee Rosner. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Alex, just before you go on to the ordinances, on the finishing up the auction, so we, does this go to auction again? What, what's the process now? Steve? Do you want to? <coughs> Mr. Rother, uh, do you want to comment on the next steps as far as the, uh, the, the private sale, the sale of our? It, it's. It's a situation where, uh, I'm sorry, I was distracted here reading another matter, but uh, it's, it's a matter where uh, the, the parties that could bid um, found that the um, appraisal was too high and have asked that uh, it be reconsidered the price at, a, at, a lesser, at a lesser price. Is it for reappraisal or for us to consider a lower price? Here, here's, here's the issue, the, the, and, and we're going to be discussing this with the appraiser. Um, and, I, and I wasn't about to do that until there were no bidders, because someone might have come in and bid at, the, at that number. But the, uh, the objection was that the appraiser took the per square foot value that he arrived at 
looking at the large parking lot behind the library and simply on a square foot basis allocated that price to this remnant which couldn't be used for any purpose and the the argument is that the the unit price the per square foot price should have been considerably less because this was a remnant can't be used for any other purpose and so and it, it's it sounds like a logical argument it's something we're going to take up with the appraiser um, perhaps we'll come back with a with another uh, purchase price okay. thank you okay uh, next is ordinances on second reading an ordinance to amend the code of the township of south orange village section 152-33 schedule I with respect to parking on Western Drive North and Western Drive South. This is Ordinance 23-07. Okay, and just um, for the sake of anybody uh, watching, um, we're, what we're talking about is uh, two different locations on Western Drive North, um, on the northwest side, um, prohibiting parking from Rinder Road to Western Drive South, um, on Western Drive South on the south and west side, um, prohibiting parking from West End Road to Western Drive North. Um, at this time, I'd like to open this ordinance up um, for public hearing. So if there's any members of the public who wish to speak about this ordinance um, in particular, uh, you may come forward. Uh, good evening, my name is David Schwartzbard. I'm at 303 Western Drive South. Um, you know, I'm probably the person who started this, asked the safety committee to look into the street. Uh, the police chief, you know, looked at it and I think the decision if it's a safety hazard or not, he already determined that it is a safety hazard. Our street is only about 24 or 25 feet wide. Uh, based off research I've done, a street should be at least 28 feet wide to permit parking on both sides. Um, what happens in our street is if when cars are parked on either side, uh, if they're spaced a little bit apart from each other, uh, uh, it creates a slalom course. So now you have cars weaving up and down the street. And when they're parked adjacent to each other across, um, it is very difficult to get through at times. And I would say impossible for a fire engine to get through. And um, notwithstanding the comments made by the other neighbors, where you know they've never seen an emergency vehicle in 35 years, um, you know I wouldn't want my house to be the house that's burning and the fire engine can't get through, or an ambulance can't get through and says, oh I have to go around the block, and in those three minutes someone dies of a heart attack. So the question is, do you want to wait until there is a, a fatality to make the area a little safer for everybody? I do have a picture. If you're curious to get an idea of sort of what it looks like, as well as the information I found about the street widths, if you're curious to see either one of these things. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to speak at this time? Yep, Just please come forward. <coughs> Aaron Nirenberg, 289 Western Drive South. Um, we've lived in South Orange since uh, 1969, the first 16 years of which we lived on Varsity Road in Tuxedo Park. The reason I say that is because uh, it's close to Seton Hall, and uh, before we even moved in, there had been a problem in the past with commuter students from Seton Hall parking um, on our street all day. Um, so the village, um, posted signs in the areas most affected, limiting parking to two hours, which solved the problem. And I wonder if the uh, trustees couldn't take a look at our neighborhood, and um, it seems to me that the gentlemen who spoke, who want the change, live where the where Western Drive curves. If perhaps just there, parking could be eliminated. But where I live, when I asked uh, three neighbors um, who couldn't be here tonight, uh, when I told them about this, um, they said, why? Uh, parking just isn't an issue. The emergency squad did come to my house uh, in March uh, when I had an incident, and they had no problem. 
Um, and I think if there were to be a problem, chances are if a car is in the street, the driver of that car is probably in the house closest to the parking space and someone could simply call them or knock on the door and say, please move your car. A fire engine has to get through. So um, I, don't, I hope the trustees aren't in the business of uh, solving problems that don't need to be solved. There's enough work to do um, and we're happy the way things are. Thank you. If anybody would like to make a comment, just please come to the podium and just state your name and address for the record, please. Ronald Regala, 302 Western Drive South. I live about uh, almost in the middle of the uh, Western Drive South. These two roads, uh, Western Drive North, Western Drive South, are are part of a horseshoe shape kind of affair. With, uh, one leg being Western Drive South, one the other leg being Western Drive North. The two people that favor the, the ban on parking or, or limitation on parking live in 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 the uh, in the hoop part of the, of this horseshoe. And maybe there is some merit to what they say if if they are very much worried about emergency vehicles. Um, I have seen. Uh, fire trucks go up and down through there with no problem with with parking i have also seen emergency vehicles uh the rescue squad in fact uh come to houses one down from me uh, one of the persons spoke tonight was and one on the other side of me and one across the street from me with no with no problems um, I, don't, I don't understand why this is being considered, unless it's, uh, I don't know why, is this kind of a pay your fines kind of thing? Um, it's going to change the whole character of this neighborhood. It's going to put these ugly signs. You're going to have to, to tell people that there's no parking there if, they, if this goes through. And these, these terribly ugly signs of no parking, no parking, no parking are going to have to be posted all around, all around the state. These two, these two streets, in fact, one is only 100 yards long. The other side is only 125 yards long. Okay, so this is not, you're talk, not talking about some big, big thing where you can't go around the street and can't see that there is there's a, a jam on parking, if there is such a thing. The only times I, I see any kind of, of hang-up is, is when they're cutting lawns with the extra-wide vehicles that they need to, to cart around their... Uh, lawn mowing equipment but other than that they're there in the morning they're right near their truck most people parking on the street are right there they're either housekeepers they're either people who live there and just park on the street because it's more convenient than whipping in a driveway whipping out uh, I don't think there's a need for this I mean anything can happen any kind of emergency can happen my goodness a helicopter can crash into your house so you can prepare for emergencies and don't lie don't allow helicopters to fly over South Orange. Why not pass an ordinance like that? What if, what if, what if? I think it's unwarranted and it should be struck down. Thank you. Gary Goldberg, 320 Western Drive, North and South. Um, where I live on Right in the middle of there, there's a, there's a stairway that goes up to the South Mountain School. Um, intermittently, they have events at the school. When there are events at the school, many cars park on Western Drive for the parents to go up those steps and go to. It's very narrow when they're, when they're parked there. You know, it's not every night. Maybe it's six times seven times, eight times during the school year. Um, I understand what my neighbors say. I'd prefer not to have signs on the block also. I don't think there's going to be, have to be that many signs, but I just want to avoid what could be a very dangerous situation when cars are parked on both sides. I've spoken to the um, people at the South Orange Fire Department about it. I asked their opinion. And they, they acknowledge that they feel when cars are parked on both sides, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for them to get their fire truck up the street. 
Um, they thought it was, would be a good idea to allow parking on only one side. Um, as David said, um, when the police made an investigation of the street, they felt it was a, it was a safety hazard. So, you know, as, as is being said, maybe nothing will ever happen. It's a possibility, but maybe something will. Things happen. And um, I think that it's important to try to avoid that. Thank you. Hi, uh, Punkit Sharma, 294 Western Drive South. Um, the, the issue with the, the, the fire trucks, I have not spoken, unlike my neighbors, I have not spoken to the fire department. Um, I do, however, believe that if there were a, an emergency where a fire truck was having any problem getting through, I believe these large trucks would do kind of what the firemen do in, when a car is parked in front of a hydrant. They break the windows down, they hook up the hoses, and they go like that. They don't move the car. They just they barrel through, and that's what they do if there's a true emergency. That's what they'll do. I've also, I have young children, and as I said earlier, I've had the fire, uh, the ambulance squad to my house about three times in the six, in the eight years I've lived here. Um, and they've gotten through uh, no problem each time. Uh, again, this is not a cut through street. We don't live near the train station. Nobody parks their car here. Um, you're going to force the people who would normally park on our street to further park down on West End Road, tying up traffic for our other neighbors. Um, so thank you. Thank you. I have another comment. Ronald Regala, 302 Western Drive South, South Orange. Um, I understand that the <laughs> speaking to police chiefs, speaking to firemen, but what can you expect them to say? Do you expect them to say and, and allow themselves open for liability to say, no, we should loosen up everything. I mean, we should not tighten up all the parking regulations trying to get through and all that sort of thing. You, you could expect someone in, in their position to say, yeah, we should tighten it up, why not? We should have no parking on those streets. Great, that would be fantastic. But of course, we live there, the people who live there would like to park on the street for the convenience. Some of us don't have a lot of room to park in, on their property. What happens then? What happens when visitors come? I mean, it, it's, it's, it causes stress. I don't think we can rely upon police chiefs, firemen. I mean, of course they're going to say, yes, we should have more ordinances, clear out the roads, let's clear this thing up, let's have more signs, let's have more fines. That would be fantastic. I'm not for that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Okay, at this time I'd like to um, close public comments and move on to uh, the board discussion. Um, just before, before we begin the discussion, I just have uh, kind of a question um, for anybody, just to refresh my memory and, and maybe everybody that's here, is just maybe walk through the steps uh, that this ordinance came to be where it is. I know it was discussed in the um, Public Safety Committee a couple different times. I don't recall how it was brought to the Public Safety Committee. Um, I do know the police department was involved in discussing it, so maybe um, we can get... My recollection is it was actually brought by one of the gentlemen who spoke today, Mr. Schwartz, is that the name? Um, brought it to the attention, I believe, of the former chair of the Public Safety Committee, who invited him to come to the uh, meeting. And I believe, and as is normal at the, those meetings, the fire chief and the police chief are present. So discussion ensued, and um, I think there was a consensus from the two chiefs that they believed. And I, I think the traffic officer, uh, Sergeant Corrigan, also weighed in on the desire more room for vehicles. Okay. And so then, then the recommendation came from public safety who had Mr. Rother working in conjunction with the village engineer to come up with the, because it's weird, it's a horseshoe shape, so you kind of have to do part of it. Essentially, it's the outer ring, if you will, that's the no, proposed for no parking. Okay. I, I do have a couple questions. Uh, one is that um, since Chief Markey is mm -hmm. here, I wonder if he can come up and make some comments uh, relative to the fire department. Yeah, Chief, if you could, uh, if you have anything to add, please feel free. 
That's what you get for coming to the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, both these streets, I'm very familiar with both these streets. And uh, I can understand the concerns of the residents on the street. And when, when asked, uh, you know, I would say, you know, I don't want any parking anywhere. But we live, in the, we live in the real world with you, and we know how much it takes to operate our vehicles. It's not so much the width of the vehicle for us, it's the positioning of the vehicle and operating the vehicle. I mean, for a ladder truck, we need, we need 18 feet to operate. So, you know, that's discussed in the Public Safety Committee. For an engine, we like to have three feet around the engine. So the engine itself is eight feet wide, so, it, so you didn't do the math. It's four. Yeah. Because there, there are outriggers, there are outriggers on, on the aerial ladder truck. And in order to put the aerial up into operation, the outriggers, outriggers come out on four feet on each side. No, I'm sorry, we can't really get into too much of a back and forth here. Um, one of the things that I, that I would, uh, Chief, if you could um, detail a little bit more for perhaps anybody that's not familiar with the operations, you're kind of talking about it's not just exactly the exact shape of the fire truck that it may fit in there, but if you can talk about um, the space around what you need there. So one of the pieces is when the ladder goes up, there are uh, basically pieces that keep the truck kind of planted to the ground that need, you said, four feet on either side to be able to do that. Yes, correct. Is there, and there's equipment stored in the side. Is there anything else that, that requires that you have some space around the truck to be able to operate? A lot, of, a lot of the vehicles are, are have transverse shelving inside them and equipment is so it can be taken out on either side of the truck and what you'll do is you, you'll bring that, that shelf out four feet to either side depending on what you want off that shelf to take it off the truck. So you, know, you need a workable space around the vehicle so that the firefighters can get around the vehicle. So even if you were like able, for example, to squeeze a truck in um, and maybe you had a couple feet on either side, if you were trying to get a uh, um, you know the jaws of life outside and it's right in the, it's in the very middle of the compartment without getting the shelf out there be it'd be difficult or impossible for someone to reach all the way onto the inside of the truck and pull it out yeah, just the ca just the cabinet doors alone a lot, a lot of the doors we use roll-ups now but what happens with the equipment such as you just described there are roll-out shelves that that equipment actually rolls out and it's the safety for the firefighters backs in particular this equipment is heavy so rather than have them reach into the compartment and hyperextend their back and pick up 200 pounds of equipment uh, in that position, you know, we roll out a shelf and they, they can lift it up safely without inj injuring themselves. Yeah, you know, I, I know, and I know we get worst case scenarios and, you know, it's the uh, police and the fire and the, and the, and the rescue squad where we a lot more about these things than the average person does. And it's just pointed out, it's easier for them to say no than yes, but this is really also all about response time. And you hold up response time to wait for someone to come out, and we know from other incidents that certainly seconds are enough to make the difference between life and death. And yes, it may never happen on Western Drive, but that's but that's really the the uh, issue, especially with the rescue squad. And I, I don't want to be the one person who's going to have a heart attack the one time there's too many cars parked on that street that a rescue squad vehicle or the fire truck can't get through. And you know maybe there's a better solution to only allowing parking. Uh, at the, and I don't know the bottom of the street that well. I can't picture it. I've been up it enough times, but I can't picture exactly how much room it is. Maybe there is a better solution just at the horseshoe park to only allow parking on one side. Maybe maybe that's another way to go. And I don't know if the uh, if the uh, public safety committee looked at that or not. If, if the fire chief wants to comment on that, um, but it, it probably is something that we might want to consider at that at that perspective. And I don't know if it should be the transportation advisory committee which is supposed to be looking at these things on a parallel path when, when, they, uh, when it comes to a committee like the Public Safety Committee. From, from my recollection is that it's the horseshoe part that's the real problem, especially for a truck to make a turn. It wasn't so much getting into the street, but I'd have to go look at it again or I'd have to let an expert. And the Transportation Advisory Committee has the experts on it. So if we want to hold off on this, we can do that <coughs> and have them look at it and, and see it, or we can table it or vote on it. I I have to concur with, with Mark on that one. Uh, I live pretty close to that neighborhood. Both of my kids went to uh, South Mountain School, and many times I went up that set of back stairs the gentleman was referencing. And I have certainly seen the experience of that very quickly crowding up on both sides in the morning with parents dropping their kids off, and then it disperses just as quickly. Uh, 
and that happens in the afternoons as well. And as the gentleman pointed out, there are evening events as well where that uh, you know people try to sneak up on the school from the backside there. Um, and I would think, Chief, that the critical choke point would be either one of those, uh, I don't know what to call it, the, the shoulders of the, the, the horseshoe. I've been there myself and seen that uh, landscaping, uh, even the short uh, trailers can't, can't make that turn if there are cars parked on either side. So I have a hard time believing that uh, a ladder truck could do that. Um, especially since you don't have a joint in the, in the middle of the ladder truck. Um, so not knowing what the uh, Public Safety Committee looked at as far as options goes, I mean, I would think at the very least you would want to clear the shoulders on one side at least of that. And I would think the ideal side would be the side that the kids walk down from the back of the school anyway, so you could keep a sight line there as well because <coughs> cars coming around the corner, if, kid, if they are parked on that side, and kids are popping out of that stairwell, that's, that's a different type of accident waiting to happen. Um, and so I, I'd like to know more about what were considered as, as options uh, to solve the problem. Yeah, I, I didn't finish the comments that I had sorry, before. Sorry. Um, the, I'm, I happen to be looking at a Google map that shows the street with a saber tree truck on one side and a car parked on the other and another car going down the middle. But besides that, um, my, my concern is uh, a number of items. One is how do we enforce it? And secondly, this is not the only street that has this type of uh, problem. Mm -hmm. We have Cumberland, West End, <coughs> a whole bunch of streets which are similar. I I if you look at Cumberland during school hours, it's impossible to get by. Mm -hmm. uh, or West End Avenue. Uh, so I, I think it's appropriate to take a look at mo a more ho uh, holistic approach to seeing what the issues are and how, how to take care of it. And I have another problem with how does this get enforced? Is it that the neighborhood has to make complaint to the police department who sends out the parking authority um, to give out uh, tickets? Um, it's the local residents who uh, maybe want to uh, uh, park their cars on the street from, from time to time uh, or have, have visitors who are coming in, which, which becomes all kinds of restrictive problems. Just one further comment for the board and the public. Um, when we consider things like this, uh, something that hasn't come up and generally doesn't come up uh, from the public when they consider some things like this, is during inclement weather, the, the road that you're currently look at narrows. The parking moves more towards the center. It, it, gets, it gets more difficult uh, for apparatus to move in those conditions when we look at these various conditions we take a lot of things into consideration and one of the things that we take into consideration is the public and we try our best uh, to try to keep the neighborhood character we, we do everything we can but for us I agree when it comes to safety we're going to go on safety every day of the week okay. thanks chief um, are there any other comments or questions from any trustees I'm sorry the, just uh, any other trustees Sure. I, I remember being at the public safety meeting, I believe it was back in February. At the time, there was only one trustee there. Um, I believe it was Trustee Gould. Um, and I was there in my role as chair of the Citizens Public Safety Committee. Um, it was one individual who brought it forward. I remember us discussing it. But that's kind of why uh, I believe there was a question about how these things happen. What are you trying to fix? Is that that's the purpose of having something on a first ordinance or a first reading to notify the neighborhood to see if this is a problem that you have feedback. Um, so this is good that everyone came out tonight to share your feedback. Basically what we've had was one or two individuals say that it's a problem, address it, and a handful of others who said it's not a problem, it hasn't been a problem. So this is again one of those uh, tough uh, policy uh, decisions that we have to make because I'm not a traffic or transportation expert so we rely on our professionals. Um, from the two chiefs, I remember them saying that there were public safety aspects but as Trustee Levison pointed out, we have a lot of streets in South Orange that have the exact same problem. So we can either address it piecemeal or we could do it a little bit more comprehensively. I, I would tend to agree with Trustee Levison that the more that we could do this inclusive of all the streets that have the exact same problem would make a little bit more sense. Um, and then I did have a uh, 
question. Was the village engineer involved? Yes. Mm -hmm. And his recommendation was <coughs> to limit? The, the, rec the village engineer gave me, in fact, the specifications for the ordinance. I just drafted the boilerplate, but he gave me all of the specifications uh, for the for the ordinance. I don't think it would have been nice to have the village engineer here. Yeah, but I don't think he made opinion. On second re reading. What's that? I don't think he made opinion. I think he just. Well, he didn't weigh in on the, the public safety right. aspect right. of it. He, he did confirm that under current road design criteria, this is not even remotely wide enough for two sided parking. Uh, but it is what it is. And as Trustee Levison points out, it, it's a situation that's, you know, in a number of places around the town. So, you know, under, I, I can certainly get his information, but the, the general design criteria in terms of the width road to have part on both sides is, I, I think, 28 is even low end, uh, 28 mm -hmm. to 32 feet, but that's under modern day standards, and the, but the roads are what they are, and they are where they are. So with, with the expertise we have in this room, I recognize we don't necessarily have the ones, but is there either precedence or, or uh, acceptance of taking just the, let's say, where the curve is, the, the little hoop part, would it be acceptable to, to segment out the streets and just say that would be Special park is that? We'd have to go back to first reading. Because that would modify this. Mm -hmm. Correct, Steve? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And I, I, th I think um, what it sounds like, um, and feel free, any member of the board, to correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it sounds like what people are interested in is a couple different things. Um, one is what alternatives were discussed, when this was discussed. Um, two is can this be part of a larger discussion um, and I'd frankly be um, very interested in that discussion and also interested in how we have that discussion. Mm -hmm. So we do have a lot of streets in town. Um, and three is um, a more thorough discussion or opinion from the engineer about is, is this, um, I guess along the lines of the first point of what alternatives were discussed, you know, can we keep a few spaces kind of at the top and the bottom of the horseshoe and it's really the middle part that's the problem. Um, so maybe what we can do is put those questions um, uh, to the village engineer um, and maybe recommend tabling this, not necessarily um, voting it down in case the vill village engineer comes back and says, well, actually, this is the only option that works here, the other ones, and feel free to discuss them, but, and then the board decides not to. So you can always make the decision to vote it down next time, um, but if it is desirable to move forward, then it's ready um, to be done. I'd rather take it one step further and have the village engineer who goes to the transportation advisory committee meeting, which has a transportation engineer on it, to public meeting. This way residents can go to the meeting, discuss with the two engineers, and have it all out there in the open in a form that makes more sense than necessarily to this one. So I'd like to table this for the next meeting um, pending a discussion in this, the transportation yeah, advisory we'll committee. We'll ask Mr. Peterson to add it to the agenda, notify the residents as long as they leave their email addresses with the clerk or the deputy clerk and we'll notify the residents of the street. Wait, but it doesn't add to the holistic... Uh, no, but we can ask the Transportation Committee to also look at okay, that, but right. this is on the table right now, and then we should look at the whole thing as well. Yeah, and, and I would be curious to discuss, and I'm not sure, we can certainly ask the um, uh, Transportation Advisory Committee, um, but it, I think it's really more of a discussion um, among ourselves, our engineer and our police department, is how would we go about having this discussion for every street? I mean, I can certainly say, um, to weigh in just briefly my own opinion, um, as much as you can't prepare for everything going wrong, um, I've driven emergency vehicles and I've been and I've driven them down streets that you can't get down, um, and I would not want that to be me because someone is improperly parked. Um, and I think that um, I've seen this road when it's full, and I've seen some of the other roads in town, um, even by Marshall School before some of the rules were changed there when there was more parking. Um, and there's there's no way to get a fire truck through that or an ambulance, um, and there's certainly no way to safely operate it. Um, especially in an area where there are children. Um, you've got, you know, six inches on either side. You don't want to have to do that. Um, so I'm, you know, a little bit uh, leaning towards the idea of making sure that all the streets are safe and accessible for emergency vehicles. But it does sound like we do need to have a discussion about what the different options are. Um, and it sounds like the best forum for that discussion, which would be a little more interactive in the format of these meetings, which is really kind of public comment period and board discussion, would be in the Transportation Advisory Committee, where you can actually have a more interactive discussion. Um, so I think that that was a good suggestion, um, and if the residents that are interested in doing that um, can leave their information, um, I've got s most of them here, um, but if you want to leave your information um, with Ms. Smith up here um, before you leave, please do so, and uh, we'll email you the date of the Transportation Advisory Committee meeting. Um, and then with that, it sounds like the board is interested in tabling this, 
um, to the next meeting. So at this point, I'd like to ask for a motion to table. Well, I just have one additional comment that we include enforcement if we do have uh, regulation. Okay, we, could you clarify? Well, who's going to enforce the no parking rules if, if it's a Same larger? Way that it's enforced yeah. everywhere else in the yeah. Please, resident complaints. If, if we if we have it as a larger context. Well, that's the parking that's, authority has the responsibility yes. of enforcing those uh, regulations. So you want to have a, a larger discussion about how? Or include the parking authority in that discussion. Okay. Well, maybe we can make we sure can that they that. come to the transportation advisory committee meeting. Mark and I will ask the chair to add it. Well, with that, I move to table and refer this to the Transportation Advisory Committee. Second. Okay, there's a motion to table that was seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Second by. Who was the second by? Sorry? Uh, Trustee Levison was the second. Um, and, and just to make sure, although we do need a roll call to move an ordinance forward, is everybody's understanding, Mr. Roth, Mr. Roth or Ms. Smith, that just the voice vote is fine for tabling yeah. in the ordinance, sure. right? Yes. I just want to make sure. The Transportation okay. Committee normally meets the first Wednesday of the month. I just, since next week is uh, July 3rd, I'm, I'm not sure if they're meeting then or not. So. We have a liaison to the Transportation Advisory Committee. Okay, so you'll take care of reaching out to them and coordinating yeah, that? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Here. Okay, thank we you. Have, we have thank you for coming thank out you. tonight. Okay, we have... Um, Thank you for coming out. Another ordinance on second reading. This is yeah. ordinance. Yep. Yeah. Actually, why don't um, pass this around people can just through emails if they haven't. Oh, thank you. You can leave an email or a phone number, whatever it is. She can read. Um, and uh, Ms. Smith, whenever you're ready for the uh, next ordinance for second reading. <laughs> Okay. Ordinance 2013-8, an ordinance pursuant to NJSA 48-17-10, authorizing the license in certain premises, more particularly described in the attached agreement to Cablevision of Newark. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open this ordinance up for a public hearing. If there's any members of the public who wish to comment on this ordinance specifically, please come forward. Okay, seeing as there are no members of the public who wish to comment on Ordinance 2013-08, I'd like to close the public hearing and ask for any board discussion. Seeing as there is no questions or comments from the board, I'd like to ask for a motion. I move it. Uh, moved by Trustee Levison. I second. Seconded by Trustee Davis Ford. We have the roll, please. Roll call. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Collum? Yes. The board, uh, the ordinance is passed in second reading. Thank you. Ordinance 2013-9, an ordinance establishing the salary range for deputy village administrator. Uh, folks in the back, if you don't mind, if you, if you guys don't mind, if you could just take it downstairs, that would be great. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open uh, Ordinance 2013-09 up for uh, public hearing. If there's any member of the public who wish to speak about this ordinance specifically, please come forward. Seeing as there are no members of the public who wish to speak about this ordinance, I'd like to open it up for a board discussion. Seeing as there is no board discussion, I'd like to ask for a motion. I move. Moved by Trustee Collum. I second. Seconded by Trustee Davis Ford. Can we have the roll, please? Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Collum? Yes. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Ordinance 2013-09 has passed in second reading. Okay. <clears throat> Ordinance 2013-10, an ordinance to amend certain sections of the land use development portion of the South Orange 
code to allow for fees and escrow deposits for applications to be heard before the South Orange Historic Preservation Commission. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak um, on Ordinance 2013-10? I'd like to open it up for public hearing. Seeing as there are no members of the public who wish to speak on this ordinance, I'd like to close public hearing. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Do we have a motion? I move. Moved by Trustee Davis Ford. Second. Seconded by Trustee Column. Have the roll, please. Okay. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Column? Yes. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. This ordinance 2013 10 is passed on second reading. Thank you. And we have uh, several ordinances on first reading this evening. Okay. Ordinance 2013 13. An ordinance establishing salary ranges for certain non union and supervisory personnel. Thank you. Uh, this ordinance basically sets salary ranges um, for all of our employees that are outside of um, any unions. Um, those uh, salary ranges and salaries are negotiated separately. Um, so this is for all of the other uh, employees, non-union and supervisory personnel that are not part of unions. Um, and this is retroactive to um, January 1st, 2012, is that correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments from the board? I just had one question, which is uh, there, we're making a distinction between hired before January 1, 2012 and hired after January 1, 2012, but the percentages seem to be the same, so I'm wondering what the distinction is there. Well, that, for. you're on the, actually on the second ordinance, the second? PDA ordinance, okay. and that, the distinction there is, um, relates to the additional steps. The percentages are the same, but they hired after there's additional Why steps. Why don't we wait until okay. we get to that right, so ordinance right. to have that discussion? All right, I'm looking at the wrong thing. <coughs> okay, are there any other uh, questions or comments on this ordinance, or Mr. Lewis, anything that you'd like to further elaborate on about it now again this just sets ranges and then the actual salaries will come up at a, at a later at the public hearing once the ordinance is in effect there will be a resolution that sets actual specific salaries mm -hmm. for each stated position thank you um, I move moved by trustee Levison second seconded by trustee Schnall <laughs> have the roll please roll call trustee Clark yes trustee Collin yes trustee Davis Ford yes Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Ordinance 2013-13 passed on first reading. Ordinance 2013-14, an ordinance establishing salary ranges for members of the PBA slash SOA locals 12 and 12A. Thank you. Um, this ordinance establishes salary ranges for uh, the members of our uh, police department in the patrol and supervisory positions. This does not apply to um, the captains and the chief. Um, and this is for the years uh, 2012, 13, and 14. That's correct. And these were the result of the negotiation while we were in arbitration uh, or pending an arbitration hearing. So these, these were the same ones that were attached to the memorandum solidifying that agreement. Um, just to, to trustee uh, Clark's uh, point, uh, if you look at the I'll just schedule, speak up a little. Uh, tr the, if you look at the schedule, the distinction is that those before, hired before January 12th for the patrol officers, there was seven steps to top pay, and, and as a result of those negotiations for those hired after January 1st, there are nine steps. So it, it just spreads it out a little longer, it takes you longer to get the top pay. I see. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions or comments from the board about this ordinance? Do have a motion? I move. Moved by Trustee Column. Second. Seconded by Trustee Clark. Have the roll, please. <clears throat> Trustee Column? Yes. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnell? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 2013 14 passed in first reading. I move that Ordinance 20. 13-13 and 2013-14 be set down for a second reading and final passage at the July 22nd, 2013 meeting of the Board of Trustees and that a public hearing be held at that time and that the village clerk be authorized to take the necessary action regarding public notice of such hearing. Moved by Trustee Davis Ford. Second. 
Seconded by Trustee Levison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. We've got a number of uh, resolutions on our consent agenda this evening. Resolution, um, I'm going to begin with resolution 2013-134, resolution adopting a form of tort claim notice, resolution appointing Lee Kimball as police records clerk, resolution appointing Peter Rodriguez as a member to the Citizens Public Safety Advisory Committee, a resolution authorizing the village president to execute the Department of Community Affairs, Division of Codes and Standards acceptance letter for the village's participation in the state local cooperative housing inspection program for the period of July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2014. Resolution authorizing the village president to execute a lease with South Orange Properties LLC for office space located at 76 South Orange Avenue for temporary village offices. Resolution affirming the village administrator's hiring of pool staff for the 2013 season in the Department of Recreation and Cultural Affairs. Resolution affirming the village administrator's hire, hiring of part-time office staff at the Bear Community Center in the Department of Recreation and Cultural Affairs. Res resolution affirming the village administrator's hiring of summer playground programs staff for the 2013 summer season in the Department of Recreation and Cultural Affairs. Resolution affirming the village administrator's hiring season seasonal employee employees in the Department of Public Works. <coughs> A resolution hiring probationary firefighters in the South Orange Department of Public Safety Fire Force. A resolution authorizing the placement of a lien on property, private property for a special cleanup of private property at 40 Stanley Road in the amount of $1,035.44. A resolution authorizing the placement of a lien on private property for a special cleanup of private property at 216 Garfield Place in the amount of $1,883.66. A resolution authorizing the placement of a lien on private property for a special cleanup of private, private property at 346 Academy Street in the amount of $762.33. Resolution appointing members of the Board of Trustees as members to the South Orange Maplewood Board of School Estimate. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on any of these uh, consent agenda resolutions? Yes, 2013-147. Uh, uh, just um, for the public uh, benefit, uh, identify the trustees who are being appointed to uh, you the know, Board of Estimate. It's funny, it's actually not even in the resolution. Because yeah. we haven't discussed it yet. Uh, well, I, th I think the intention, um, I thought we had discussed at a previous meeting, was to appoint the same members that we appointed to the Board of Ed Liaison right. uh, committee. I said that the we work meeting, we should have the same three trustees. Oh, okay. Off. I'm fine with All that. All right. So just put it on the record. Okay. So that was myself, Trustee Levison, Trustee Schnall, and Trustee Clark. Yeah. And Tr Trustee Clark, were you the alternate member? I think I was alternate. Yes. Okay, that, that's what. It, okay, so those will be those are the members of our uh, board of ed liaison committee. Those will also be um, the members of our um, half of the board of school estimate. Thank you. Thank I have, you. I have a couple of questions, comments. Mm -hmm. One is on the liens on the property that we do for cleanup, which uh, in this case are three. Is there is there a uh, is there a way to make the liens? Uh, the penalties on top of it, or that only has to go to the courts, the fines. You, you mean we, we can't just build in fines into the ordinance automatically? If that's what you mean. And, and where do we come up with these these numbers from? This is based on our Department of yes. Public Works right. hourly yeah. rate. He tracks the hours and has a spreadsheet. And equipment. But, equipment. And equipment. Hours. Similar but, to like the FEMA. But since, but since this is not, since this takes away from their normal duties, and this is not what we should do. Could we make this an overtime only and, and charge the overtime rate for this? Because we shouldn't be taking Department of Public Works away from our regular duties. Okay. So I would like to you, make it. We'd an have to look into whether you could do it as overtime. But one of the things we ironically just did discuss uh, earlier this evening in legal and personnel was uh, looking into possibly doing this as a sort of an outsource and just go do an RFP for a landscape or whoever, charge them and not take away from Public Works and whatever the bill is, it is. I just uh, figured our Public Works employees wouldn't mind. Making overtime. 
could do it, but we can look into that. Uh, okay. Um, the second question more has to just a co comment to that is, is that it would be difficult in the evening hours to do that. Uh, Not in the summer. Yeah, but it's more think... than just the summer. Okay. The day ends at 4.30, they have from 4.30 till 7.30, mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, it's not impossible. I understand but in the winter, it's dark at 4.30. Uh, two other things. One is the the, uh, the lease of the property for 76 South Orange yeah. Avenue for Village Hall, which I got the amount. What was that? That, that was for 30 months? We have the option to keep it for up to 30 months? 24 months is the base term, and then we can extend in three months increments for an additional up to 24 months in the same term. Okay, so it hopefully. could theoretically go 48 months. This Hope that's not the case. Right. It's not and, even and, say that and, number again. <laughs> the, 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 meet, the committee meetings, will they be meeting at the uh, at, Bill, at 76 South Orange Avenue, the legal committee, planning zone, and transportation? Yeah, I think we envision most of the sort of the standing committees to meet. And planning board and board of adjustment, where would they be meeting? SOPAC. SOPAC, also. Okay. So we've already notified them of the dates that we're going to need. Right. SOPAC. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, and this actually, the, uh, as I indicated in my earlier email, the resolution uh, anticipated having the lease version finalized, which uh, we were not able to get done, in part because of the delay in getting it, and then uh, technical difficulties on my ability to access and forward some things to Mr. Rother, because I was off on Friday. Um, so we will, uh, the, the formal lease would be on for the next agenda. Uh, at this point, I, I think we've discussed, and everybody generally knows the terms, so I don't know that there's any the parking for the public that wants to come during the daytime is that going to be on the main deck or is that going to be on the lower? In the deck, um, I think there's will be three reserve spots that we can note, you know, 15 minutes or less, 30 minutes or less, village business only, and then we'll have additional spots in the deck for staff that are going to be kind of spread out there. The way it's look right now, we can't get one contiguous block of all our spots, but but we do need for those three public spots to be very clearly marked. There's a close to right. Okay. So I think we need to pull out right. 138 for Correct. separate action? Correct. Which well, one? Not even for any action. It'll be on for the July 8th when the lease is finished. Which Do we what? need to table it or just? Um, either or. That's, That's no, we can, we can, yeah, we can just, just take it out. out. Yeah. Take it out the okay. and put it back okay. when I, the lease is finalized. I also have a question about 137. I saw the attachment letter. Can somebody explain this a little <coughs> bit more? Which, which number? The 137. That's the, uh, the cooperative. That's the DCA uh, yeah. co yeah. The cooperative? I had, I had a question on that one as well, which is the uh, in, in essence, there are certain um, requirements um, in terms of multifamily hotels and dwellings and licenses and who does or doesn't do them. Um, we requested, we, we have the capability to have the license to do certain inspections, so if you request it, uh, that we'll just do them locally instead Mike. of the state instead of the state doing it, uh, and they approve it. Then we sign this agreement. They essentially they allocate the sum of twelve thousand five hundred dollars to cover the cost of those inspections. Um, you have to ask there. You have to have certain levels of licenses to do certain inspections. Mm -hmm. And if you have them, you can request. We'll do them. And just give us the money, and that's that's what this is. It's something we do every year. We do. We currently do that. Yeah. Okay. It's and just each year you have to. Each year you have to do. It. It's does, only good for a year. Who does the inspections? Is that unusual? People in our building. Okay, so it's, usual, so it's not any extra right. no extra expense that. just offsets are going out there anyway so. okay okay any other questions yes yeah, so i have 139 140 and 141 okay um i have requested in the past that we include in um salary or excuse me uh, uh, employee resolutions that we put down what the impact is going to be on the budget yeah we and we're working on that you had mentioned that i think at the last meeting um, and I am working with this specifically relates to the seasonal staff uh, and trustee Levison had, had suggested that we need to um, I think initially there was a thought of each individual employee we have to say how many hours they're going to work and what the rate is and then we when we talked uh, particularly with uh, the director Kate Schmidt she indicated you know it depends on how many I get and the more I get they may work less hours or you know some of them don't last some of them stay later go away to college so uh, what we're working on is is identifying the, the total budget allocation for lifeguards for these different various programs and then the certification that all the people combined won't exceed that amount. Correct. So we, I, I'm working with, on the, with her on that currently and we will have 
Can we go back to 147 with the appointments to the Board of School Estimate? I don't know how this was done in the past. I know that we have three people who are the liaisons from this body. Uh, generally on questions or decisions or recommendations that you're making on behalf of South Orange, is that first here discussed and the majority here will be what you recommend to the Board of School Estimate or are you three individually making recommendations without consent from the rest of the board? It's been, both, it's been done both ways. It's, um, been, it's, been a, it's been a matter of disagreement among different people. I've always felt that they should come to the Board of Trustees I, first. I would like that. Ask us for a majority opinion and Correct. then vote the way we asked them to. But other people, other people who actually have to vote on it said that it's their responsibility to vote and they take our our uh, opinion under advisement and there's been other trustees who just said don't bother telling me because i would prefer if we can make just a, 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 a decision, decision collectively a policy decision right now is that i would prefer that the members to the board of school estimate first bring something to us and let us as a body um build a majority first and whatever that majority decision is be the recommendation to the I, I would agree and especially since it's almost 60 percent of the uh, of our residents taxes i really think it should be fully vetted um, yeah. i agree with trustee column with the, with the board and the majority of the board's position is what the representatives of the school board yeah. school of estimate that's how they should vote the, the only the only caveat to that is if they're at a meeting and a vote comes up and they don't have a chance to come back to us that's the only which you know, yeah. so, so if they go in there and, and, and it's been something and then it's been compromised to something else and there's a compromise between the two positions, mm -hmm. they're going to have to vote on it there without our, although... Then we should have a general yeah. understanding. Yes, I understand. But well, I think because that's going to happen in that way, they at least know how to... Before we continue with this discussion, my guess is that there really is no basis by which you can bind someone's mm -hmm. voting. Mr. Rother, yeah, is that no, I was I, I was going to intervene here because it's mm -hmm. it's a statutorily created board that has has the power to vote. Uh, I don't think you can bind them. I mean, no. you can I give them a sense. You them. can give them the sense of the mm -hmm. trustees yeah, before they it. go, mm -hmm. but but they're engaged in a process when they get there, and they can't stop and say, "Wait, I've got to go." No. But we can we can make a policy decision that they should discuss it with the board before yeah. they vote. Yeah. I think it's certainly fair, and I would think all would be in agreement that any of the issues, the best effort should be made to come here first and get the feeling of the board. And, and try and represent yeah. that as best as possible. For example, even if you would vote one way, yeah. is to say, you know, there are members of my governing body who believe this and there are members who believe this, you know, I'm here to vote this way. Um, and that that discussion happens here first. Um, if yeah. at all possible, unless like Trustee Rosner said, you're in a meeting and something comes up. No, and and I think have to there's a comparable situation where um, uh, Howard is the representative in the joint meeting. And he goes there, and and when they call, uh, you know, Commissioner Levinson to to, to cast his vote, he's he's got a vote, uh, and the same circumstance is going to arise in the Board of School Estimate. Uh, so uh, it's it's good to get a sense of the trustees, but in the final analysis, those who are appointed well, to these statutorily uh, created positions have the obligation to vote at the time they're called to do it. It's, there are certain issues right now that are coming up, which right. I think that are bigger than, 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 and should have that discussion anyway. And if we really feel strongly about it, and one trustee, you know, so if, if one trustee feels that they should vote in favor of it and the rest of the board is saying against it, he, that one trustee, and I'm pointing to him, even though it's not him, one trustee could resign from the uh, Board of School Estimate, then I just say, I'm not going to vote because I can't represent you. Please appoint someone else. Or, or in one case, going back, we actually had a trustee who was clearly not in the lines of everyone else, and he just sat out that vote and let the alternate vote. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, when we've agreed to do this, as Trustee Khan was saying, it has worked, and the Board has made it work. Okay. If we want it to work, it will work. Well, I, I think it's become more significant since the Board of School Estimates only real authority is in the capital budget. And there I'm are sorry, capital, I didn't hear you. capital capital budget. And, they, and there the are only what? I didn't hear real authority is in the capital budget. I see. Um, and there are significant capital budget items that are coming up in the Board of School Estimate. Agreed. Agreed. That's why I asked, because yeah. I know that they're going to be using the Board of School Estimate this time around, and I want to make sure if we're representing our community as a part of the Board of School mm -hmm. Estimate. So why don't you put a resolution together for here. the next meeting so we can vote on it? What's that? We'll put mm -hmm. a resolution together for the next meeting. 
to vote on. We just, nobody's to green right Isn't now. Isn't it just a policy we don't no, need a I resolution? You. If, we don't, if no, no, you don't have a policy don't, without a no. resolution. If you're going to have a policy, you've got to have a resolution. And the, the policies policy don't exist to, in the air. Is to make the best effort to bring all issues to the Board of Trustees before voting as the Board of School Estimate? Yes. Right. I, I don't think we need a resolution for that. Yeah. I, I don't think it's necessary. I trust you guys will bring the discussion to us. Okay, are there any other questions on the consent agenda? Um, sure. Number uh, 143, hiring probationary firefighters. Um, are they accounted for in the budget? We're yeah, the, all these positions are, are in the budget as introduced. Okay. But not, we're not really replacing but we only we're doing is replacing open, yeah, I realize open or people or positions that are about to be open. I, re yes. I realize that they're you know we're trying to get back up to the the number we're supposed to be. Thirty two plus one. Was whether that was factored yeah. in or not. No, we, we certainly and actually maintained in the budget the higher salaries of the departed individuals in the two cases Correct. this year. So and and as mentioned, it's there's three existing vacancies and the fourth there is going to by the time they finish the academy, it's going to basically yeah. exist. Okay. Any other questions? I have a motion for the consent agenda. Excluding? Excluding, excluding 138. Uh, I move. Okay, moved by Trustee Davis Second. Ford, seconded Second. by Trustee Levison. Can we have the roll, please? <laughs> okay. Um, Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Collins? Yes. Okay. The, the consent agenda has been approved. Thank you. And we have uh, one resolution for separate action tonight. Okay. Resolution 2013-148, temporary budget resolution for calendar year 2013. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lewis, is there anything that you want to say just to introduce this briefly? Yeah, just generally under the law until your final budget is adopted, the law allows you in increments of 26.25% uh, for three month period to introduce temporary appropriations. It's based on 26.25% of the preceding year. Uh, we've done it for the first two quarters. As you know, we've introduced our budget. We have it scheduled for public hearing. Uh, so we, we anticipate that we, you know, hopefully won't need much of this at all. and, and then new budget will go in place, but in the interim we have to pay the bill, so this just extends it again. Uh, this obviously goes away once the actual budget's adopted. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I move. Moved by Trustee Collum. Second. Seconded by Trustee Levison. Could we have the roll, please? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Collins? Yes. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Resolution 2013-148 has passed. Thank you. Um, and next is a uh, appointment um, that I'm making to the Environmental Commission, which is 2013-VP10. Um, this is the appointment of uh, Siobhan Nolan as a regular member to the South Orange Environmental Commission. Um, so that appointment has been made, and congratulations uh, to Siobhan, uh, one of our new Environmental Commission members. Um, next is the uh, approval of bills. Um, all members of the board have received uh, a copy of the bills list, and I move that we accept. Second. Okay, moved by Trustee Levison, seconded by Trustee Davis Ford. Uh, unless there are any questions, could I have the roll, please? Okay. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Collin? Abstain. Okay. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Trustee Levison? Yes. Okay. There is, um, excuse me, all A's with, the, with one extension of Trustee Collin. The, bill, the bills list has been approved, excuse me. Thank you. Um, now to do uh, liquor license renewals, um, I will in a moment ask for a motion to recess our Board of Trustees meeting um, and to reconvene as the Alcohol Beverage Control Board for the Township of South Orange Village to consider renewal of liquor licenses 
um, for the 2013-2014 licensing terms. Do I have a motion? I move. Moved by Trustee Davis Ford. Second. Seconded by Trustee Column. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I missed that. I feel like I should put on a different um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we are uh, recessing our Board of Trustees meeting and reconvening as the Alcohol Beverage Control Board. It looks like you have a question sorry, or comment. Yeah, I missed to second that. Uh, seconded by trust, uh, moved by Trustee Davis Ford, seconded by Trustee Calm. Thank you. Um, could we have a roll call for the um, Alcohol Beverage Control Board? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Column? Here. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Trustee Levison? Present. Trustee Roster? Here. Also present. Yeah, Village so. President Terrific. Thank you. Um, so we have one resolution. Resolution 2013-149, resolution approving the renewal of liquor licenses for the 2013 to 2014 license term. Thank you. Um, do folks want me to read all of the lic uh, licenses briefly? Let's skip to the public. Though. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have trouble with one of these. Um, <laughs> there are three club licenses. Um, one is South Orange BPOE Lodge uh, 1154. Uh, the next one is anybody speak? It was uh, a player. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, <laughs> Societa Savoia Savoia Club. Is that? Yes. Uh, All right. I'll, I'll leave with that. I'm going to get made fun of by. Hope Tommy Machete's not watching this. <laughs> Just roll your eyes. What's that? And yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, and the next, the third club license is the Father Vincent Manella Center of uh, Italian Culture. Um, those are the three club licenses. Um, the uh, uh, four retail distribution licenses. Um, one is the first is University Liquors, uh, A and D Liquors, Town Hall Deli, um, and the Wine Emporium. Um, retail consumption licenses. There are eight. Uh, it's Papillon, Bunnies, Crimes Beef and Ale House, Toro Loco, Above Restaurant, Orange Lawn Tennis Club. Um, 13 Kids Inc. Um, which is inactive. Right? Which is inactive. Um, that's at 19 Valley Street. Um, and is that the old stuff shirt yeah, license? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and Gaslight. Um, there, there, there was another one under um, retail. It had a, a name. I wanted to. Can you read, read the retail license? Which, what do you mean? But it was just two under retail or only? There was four under I'm not, retail. Uh, there were four under retail, which I read. Can you read them again? Um, University Liquors, A and D, Town Hall Deli, and Wine Emporium. Yeah, Wine Emporium. Where is that? Twenty Five Valley. It's right next to Papillon. Papillon. Yeah, it's right next to Papillon. Right next door to Papillon. Oh, right okay. Next. Thank you. So, so just so Thirteen Kids Incorporated, which seems like a really bad name for a liquor <laughs> license. Um, <laughs> that's uh, that's the stuffed shirt space, and Correct. so that's coming back online. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I thought that was in the process of being moved. Well, that would be the subject of another resolution, but the annual renewal, that's why it's yeah. renewed as an inactive right now. Well, we'd have to, so you may we may have to reconvene for a transfer. Something else. That's right, for the transfer of a license but to somebody else. In addition to the, if someone wanted to purchase that, there is a uh, an annual fee. Uh, yes. and, and so. Yeah, um, like $2,500 for the full ones, and I forgot what the other ones were. The, the uh, and the police gave us a clean bill of health yes. model. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is important I to mention. I can't hear you. So the what police you? gave us the the okay for all of these. Okay. Health, and police, fire, building. All, all right. Okay. okay. Health, police, fire, building. And so the one, uh, so the inactive ones, the the two, the crimes and stuff shirts. It's not uh, tied to the building, it's the individual owner. It's so tied to South Orange though. Yeah. Well, it is tied, tied to, to the location as well. If, if, it's going to be, if it's going to be moved, there has to be a place-to-place -place transfer. transfer. So the transfer of ownership or a place-to-place -place transfer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ownership's a person-to-person -person transfer. Same owner going to a different location or a new owner going to a different location. It's a place-to-place. Place -place. So you can get a person and place, you have a person only, place well, only. For permutation. Okay, um, unless there are any more questions or comments, could I have a motion? I move. Moved by Trustee Davis Ford. Oh, Second. Seconded. Seconded by Trustee Schnall. Um, can I have the roll, please? Sure. Okay, 
maybe lost <coughs> now. They'll, they'll start from the beginning. Yeah, get back to me. Trustee Clark? <laughs> yes. Trustee Collum? Yes. Trustee Davis Ford? Yes. Trustee Levison? Yes. Trustee Rosner? Yes. Trustee Schnall? Yes. Okay. Resolution 2013-149 has passed. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask for a motion um, to adjourn the Alcohol Beverage I'm, Control I'm Board I'm and second. to reconvene the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Moved by Trustee Rosner. Second. Seconded by Trustee Levison. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to reconvene the re this regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Um, I assume all that were here a moment ago are still here, at least in physical. Um, at this time, I'd like to open the meeting up for any uh, member of the public who would wish to speak, public comments. Okay, seeing as there are no uh, members of the public who wish to speak at this time, I'd like to close um, public comments and move on to our one item of new business, which is parking rates. Trustee Levison. Yes, um, I have uh, attended the parking authority meeting and we had a discussion about uh, what the future of our parking rates uh, should be, given that we're putting a, a, a new deck um, and uh, the cost is going to be incurred by the commuters or the users of that space. And uh, I would, was trying to propose that we gradually move as now at, uh, the rates up uh, so that we get to a point where it's an acceptable number that will support uh, the new parking deck. Um, this would make it compatible with what we have, or close to compatible with what we have in New Jersey uh, uh, transit lots. Um, and I guess there was one other piece that the parking authority had requested was that we move the um, parking spaces which have been allocated to us to them. We have some spaces, permit spaces, along uh, North Ridgewood Road and some other uh, uh, streets. And that, um, the problems with the ones on North Ridgewood Road is they're being underutilized because we have a, a very different rate structure than right. the other commuter, and it's not just commuter spaces, it's commuters and employee spaces. How much are the, what's the difference between the Ridgewood ones and the rest? I, 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 I think remember. they're 480 versus 300. I think that was the number, but I'm not sure if it's exactly that, but it was, it was like an in-between of the New Jersey Transit lot, and the goal was to get the, all the spaces to that 480 number. Correct. Um, over the time. We don't know what the cost of the parking deck is going to be. We've heard numbers from anywhere from 300 to 500 a year per space, but we have to tack on for the maintenance of the building and so forth, and we have to tack on whatever the parking authority needs. So if we, if, if we have two small increases, because that parking deck won't be ready until the end of 2014, it should get us to where we need. And that would be, and make a uniform parking rate for all of, of, of South Orange for commuters and employees. And this is, and I think we have to vote on transferring those spaces, but we don't actually set the rates. The parking authority does, but I think they're looking for direction from us. They, when would the rates the take effect? I would like to see them start almost as, uh, immediately. Well, but they would have to do it January 1st, the well, next yeah, increase. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. people bought, most people buy annual, annual permits. annual permits. But they do sell right. semi and quarterly. Yeah, but they might as well just raise them in January if they're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. What did the, I what would did, do it in the middle. The what are the rates for New Jersey Transit a lot? Excuse me? What are the rates at the New Jersey? Eight Jersey Transit lot is 70 a month right now. So. 70 a year. Yeah, so yeah, that's, so that's nearly double. Uh, it's a little bit more than yeah. double if you're yeah. paying. And the Ridgewood Road, run, road ones, which are underutilized. But the Jersey Transit lot's open to anybody. It's controlled by Jersey Transit, but it's also owned to non-residents. The theory behind the resident lots being less is probably because they pay property taxes and subsidize it, but the question is how much do you subsidize it? You know, we, we, we pay for the paving of the lots, we pay for the snow removal, and in return every year New Jersey uh, the, uh, Parking Authority gives us some amount of money for it that they can afford to give us, but most of the money has gone to running the jitneys in the past few years, which, which is, is the second part of my question. Which is a, which is a whole other issue because right. we have other issues with the jitney. Right. But, so I think, I, think, uh, I think most of the board's on the same page with this, but. I, I would say that, I I see where you're coming from, but I would prefer not to have any rate increases during the time that the people in that commuter lot are being displaced. I would prefer uh, it be right. after the fact. Yeah, that's the exact statement I made before that you could do it after the fact because the people, to have a rate increase when people maybe have to park in temporary lots that may not be convenient at all, this seems a little bit like rubbing salt in the wound. Agreed. Almost like you should probably have, 
Oh, if you're going to raise the rates for anybody who has to park in the temporary lots, give them a 50% discount for, for the time they park in it. And, you know, and that we don't set the rates again. The parking authority would be the ones who actually are setting it, but they do it under advisement. But I, I sort of agree with that, that it's, it's, it seems very unfair. When will we have the real numbers, something tangible that we could start talking about well, what, what the rates should be? I requested a meeting with uh, Mr. Bauman, Mr. Lewis, um, and uh, their, their parking maintenance person to, to go over this. Uh, because you know, I've just gotten too much different information on what the rates are for, for parking decks, and it seems like the 500 number is at the high end of the scale, and it also talks about manned parking. We're not having a man. Uh, there's not going to be a 24-hour guard or anything. There may be a gate. There's certainly be a gate on the residential side. There may be a gate part-time at the commuter side, so it's, it's, the cost should go down, and, and the maintenance in the first few years should also be less because we're not going to be doing any concrete repair work or anything, but they want to level off the maintenance charges so we don't have to increase rates all the time. But and we can, you know, and Mark Hartwick would have to be at the meeting if the parking authority is still going to be the I one who manages the I think it would be good deck. to have him here. Well, he may not manage that deck, so that's the uh, Yeah, that's the other, the other question. That's that's still they wanted to, yeah. That's still an open question, although I think we're leaning, you know, I think that's where we'll wind up. But and I, I think the meeting they're trying to schedule is for Friday, right? This Friday? The, I didn't get a date. No one gave me a No one got back to me. And the other part of the uh, uh, item that I had was the jitneys. Uh, the jitneys represent another another one of the issues that we no longer have our, our grant, and the village needs to is subsidizing uh, the jitney operation. Uh, the parking authority pays for the driver, but we pay for everything else. And the jitneys are getting old, and at some point they're going to need to be replaced. And they're not cheap. They're in the $150,000 range. And so we need to understand what our policy is going to be going forward with uh, the utilization of the jitneys. And, and to find out if we can get more grants for the jitneys. Right. One, one of the uh, issues they had, as we found out at the parking authority meeting, is that they, uh, <clears throat> for one of the routes, they're actually running a double bus because it's so crowded that they have to have a second one following it. So they would like, uh, instead of having the 15 seaters or 16 seaters, they, they want one that can hold 28 to 30 seats. That was my, one of my you, questions. What was the percentage of usage? Is it at 80 percent, 50 percent? The jitneys are running pretty pretty full for the most part. Some of them, I mean, not every route, every thing, mm -hmm. but the jitneys are, are doing very well. But that particular route is uh, running well past the thing. The jitney for, I think he said it was 125000 is the base cost, or it might be 130, yeah. 135. To do it, but it's cheap, much cheaper. Obviously, you only have one driver than two drivers with the same bus and the unfortunately <clears throat> these jitneys have a, a not just our jitneys but all these jitney buses have a terrible track record of, of uh, repairs needed on them they're, they're mostly uh, retrofitted uh, what, what was the base of them I forgot they, but they're, the, they're more the best of us yeah they the make a mishmash they basically take pieces best from different base. things to make these because there's not a big enough demand for any one factory to do, seem to just make these things, so they're mostly poorly made. And they're underpowered for the weight ratio that they're carrying, or something like that. No, so they have they have to have emergency exits because they are jitneys. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a whole bunch of things that they're run by a public authority, mm -hmm. so they have to abide by certain codes. Um, mm -hmm. And the other issue that go, which we've talked about in public works is that the jitneys are parked in an, in a place that is very humid and the undercarriages are, are starting to rot out and we need to find a, another place for them to be parked. That's getting repaved, isn't it? Well, uh, Yeah, but they were supposed to be, they're meant to be parked indoors and not meant right. to be parked outdoors. Right. But we've been very fortunate in terms of that because because the parking authority has more jitneys than they really need it. So they, they keep rotating them and sending them for repair. So whereas the average jitney life is you know, five to seven years, they, some of these jitneys I think are more than 10 years old now. Correct. So that, right. We're actually doing a, a fairly good job on that, but, but we're near the end of the rope on this, and we have to make a decision. And, and the jitneys operate at a loss. This is a subsidy to the to, you know, 300 or so people a day who use it, but on the other hand, it's 300 less parking spaces, and we'd, we'd rather expand the jitney use mm -hmm. and shrink it because it's much less expensive than putting together parking, at least not maybe not in the long run, but in the short mm -hmm. run. I mean, that's an argument for increased parking rates, too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's some of the money that's generated from that can be used to, to help fund the jitneys 
which if people can't afford the increased parking rates, they can take the jitney. Correct. That would be the, I mean, the larger question, the second half of uh, Howard's point, the larger question, is the taxpayer should subsidize one or the other, parking facilities or jitney service. I would say that it's jitney service because that is a, a more flexible option. And to a certain degree, the, the parking space is more of a luxury item. Um, and if you can afford it, great. Uh, if, you, if you can't, um, we want to, I think we should try to expand Jitney usage. Uh, we may need to look at the types of Jitneys where we end up purchasing and how we use the fleet and mm -hmm. uh, the routes for efficiencies and things like that. But I mean, if you're asking me right now, one or the other, I would say let's, let's Inclusive. subsidize Jitneys because we can do more ultimately with them. Right. And if we're paying for the jitneys and not using them for a grant, we can use the jitneys for anything, services we want. But the jitneys that were purchased for a grant had to be specifically used for New Jersey transit right. commuter purposes, mm -hmm. which was a problem when we wanted to coordinate different events. If we, you know, if like we, for for instance, one, exactly. If we want to have a senior senior citizens senior. route, we can't do yeah. that with yeah. NJ I'm, Transit. Jitneys. I will add also, I went to the Transportation Committee meeting on the alternate uh, to Trustee Rosner, and I am going to be meeting with Seton Hall to talk about their shoe fly system, and if there is anything out there possible that we can do between their shoe fly and our jitney, and I think that if we could get both working at full capacity and efficiency, we, we could probably do a lot right there. Well, in, in another area, which I'm a member of the uh, uh, County Shared Service uh, Committee, we're looking at regional, regionalization of the, uh, the jitney service. Currently, we have West Orange and, and Livingston coming into South Orange, but we're looking at a larger uh, usage of jitney services uh, within the county. I would think that uh, for some of the out-of-town commuters that are coming from West Orange to our, our spots, uh, even Livingston, I mean, if, it, if it's that, it ends up being that extensive a system, that would certainly ease a lot of the parking burdens. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's it's a more flexible thing, something that can be tinkered with as populations change and where they are changes. So, I have a question for those maybe you guys who are sitting on the committee. There's been some precedents or some examples where we've tiered the parking. So the ones closest right by the firehouse actually are we charge it. That's the only one. The premium. That's the only one. By now uh, we talked. We talked about it. I talked about it with the parking authority that if you know, yeah. if. No, he was waving the thing at you. If, if when the uh, deck is built, if we want to talk about premium pricing for the parking, so op some people feel the first level will be worth more than the second or third levels. Mm -hmm. So there's something that would come up in, in discussion, but it's, it's that, the problem right, with, with doing that is that if you oversubscribe, you know, if you have 100 spaces and you're selling 150 spaces, people pull in, and if you take a section of those parking spaces, make them reserve spaces for those people, it means a certain number of spaces will wind up sitting empty and overall you'll sell fewer permits, not more permits, which might mean that your revenue goes down, not up, or stays the same. And you have to enforce it. And well yeah. enforcing Which it right somehow. now, basically anyone who's paid, they get to go in that space. Yeah, but, but you have to but, somehow enforce it. Differently. But that small lot which has ten spaces is very easy to to not only the police, but you say you sold the ten permits, you're never gonna really oversell a ten space lot and that's the problem with it. But the, the whole thing of the concept of having a gate there for the, is on weekends, you could actually have overnight parking, something that we've had a big demand for in South Orange, especially on weekends, people might want to go into the city for a weekend or well, wherever. Even during the week. And what? Even during the week. And leave the car. Well, what? during the week, it's a different issue because we have commuters coming in Saturday and Sunday morning. But Friday and Saturday night, there's no commuters going to the lot Saturday and Sunday morning, so we could charge an overnight parking charge. We could use it for uh, you know people who want to go into the city in the evening, have a, uh, this a thing there. This one, yeah. But you just can't have the overnight during the week. But it's but that those are the kind of extra opportunity costs that could be, and it's much easier to manage in a deck that has a gate space and so forth. So that's they're all on the table. You're going to see Pippin. You'll see any one of the Tony Award winning shows in Broadway that happens to be. <laughs> so I guess for now we're just going to wait until we get some figures back? Or what would you like to do? I would like to uh, uh, show our intent that we would like them to move, start moving the, uh, the rates. That we agree that the rates should be uh, uh, moved uh, given that the parking deck is coming. And, and then to, to the other points, so once the 
people are being displaced or inconvenienced, we would then give them a discount off of that. So you raise the rates, but then... He doesn't agree with that. You know, so. and I, I'd like to know what we're going to be displacing them to. If we're displacing them closer to the train well, station. No, that's, that's, well, we know it's going to be. So you, no, I guess the action is um, you're going to um, propose something to Perfect. parking authority, and the parking authority is going to come yeah. before us. We, we are. Yeah, but I think the, and make I think, a recommendation. Right, the, is the that the, is that the What's the, the action? The, the action is that the board is to take a position to ask the parking authority to right. go in a take a direction. Right. Um, so we need to formalize what our position is. Um, and that we're in agreement. Which I think we could very easily do by resolution. Um, so maybe we can draft that up if people want to do that. But I would um, like to have this meeting first to find out what the costs are really going to be before okay. we just, you know. I agree. Okay. And, and, and number two, but I do think we need to do the, an ordinance, I think it has to be done by ordinance, it could be just by resolution to transfer those spaces on North Ridgewood and Third Street back to the parking authority to manage. Right. Not just to manage, but to collect the money on it and so they can have a uniform pricing. Because that will free up, I mean, that will probably, because right now we only have about we have only a handful of people, and we know there's room for 30 people. You, you can do that by resolution. We can do it by resolution, yeah. so yeah. we just need to draft the resolution for the next uh, yeah. meeting, or next special meeting, or regular meeting, next regular meeting. So we need those two resolutions, um, but the former is pending that right. meeting. Okay. Okay. If there's no more questions or comments, can I have a motion to adjourn? I move. Moved by Trustee Davis second. forward, seconded by Trustee Levison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Motion. Adjourn at 9:41. Summer meetings and.